There is not. It can be tabled. Question number seven, Dr Shane Reedy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister for Social Development, what announcements has she made recently Order. regarding support Order. for young people? Order. Sorry. There's too much uh, conversation, so it's very hard to hear the question. The member can start the question again. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister for Social Development, what announcements has she made recently regarding support for young people who are not in education, employment or training? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, earlier this month, along with the Prime Minister and other ministers, we announced a $50 million Youth Employment Pathways programme, a comprehensive strategy to reduce the number of at-risk young people not in employment, education and training in regional New Zealand. As part of the regional growth programme, central and local government will partner with iwi, businesses and support agencies to develop tailored intervention approaches. The strategy will be rolled out in the four regions of Northland, Eastern Bay of Plenty, East Coast and Hawke's Bay, and target young people who have high and complex needs and are at risk of long-term unemployment and welfare dependency and follows on from successful trials such as Kaikohe Grow in Northland and Project 1000 in Hawke's Bay. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Shane Reedy. How many young people will this program work with to help into jobs? <coughs> Mr Speaker. Order. The Mr. Honourable Speaker. Anne Tolley. We will work intensively with just over 5,000 of the most at-risk unemployed young people in the four regions. And I know that that doesn't sound like a lot to some people in this House who try and say there are 90,000 young people out there looking for work. Well, I'm sorry to tell the House this just isn't true. What they don't say is that many of those young people are caring for others, whether it's a child or an elderly relative. There are kids on a gap year or an OE. They're transitioning between training and employment or there's some people with a health condition or disability that stops them from working. There are around 18,000 young people on a benefit, 18,000 who are in a position to start work, which is a long way, Mr Speaker, from the 90,000, and some of them will only be on a benefit for a short time before they do find work. We are focused on those who need the extra help, and that's what this programme is aimed at doing. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Shane Reedy. Why then is the government focusing on young people? Mr Speaker. Order, 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 order. I'm now putting up with miles too much interjection from one person particularly. I won't name her. She knows exactly who she is. If she continues to interject, she won't be in the House for the balance of question time and for most of the afternoon. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, we know that those who go on to a benefit before the age of 20 are much more likely to stay on a benefit long term, 14 years or more. Not only this, we know that almost half of all children who grow up in a largely ben benefit dependent household end up on a benefit themselves before the age of 23. This government's strong economic plan is delivering growth and jobs in regional New Zealand and we're keen to see all New Zealand Kiwis benefit from this growth. So we're absolutely committed to breaking the cycle of welfare dependency and helping those young people live independent and successful lives. <laughs> Supplementary question, Derek Bull. Thank you. Uh, to the Minister, how can she say that needs should be, quote, the highest priority for any government, end quote, when the region she has identified, such as Hawke's Bay, has a 22 per cent NEAT rate, which has been constantly high for nine years. But only now, three months out from an election, she is embarrassed enough to do something about it. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Well, Mr Speaker, that's absolutely not true, and I um, categorically deny that that is what this government is doing. What we have been doing over a long period of time since the global financial crisis is focusing on young people, but there are a number of young people in some parts of New Zealand that represent too high a percentage of the young people. Uh, with, and, these one, and these particular young people have very high and complex needs. So, for instance, in Northland, where we're targeting about just over 2,000 of them, 1,500 are Māori, and they represent 
about 70 per cent of the at-risk population. So we're picking on the hardest young people to work with, and we are working alongside employers, alongside iwi, and alongside a range of agencies in order to get good solutions for them. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Derek Ball. When is she going to prioritise the young people in areas ignored in her plan? Those living in West Coast, Canterbury, Waikato, Southland, Auckland, Manawatu, Wellington and Taranaki, when, which have neat rates of 9, 10, 12, 14, up to 16 per cent, or does she agree with the Prime Minister that they are just, quote, pretty damned hopeless, end quote? The Honourable Anne Tommy. Well, Mr Speaker, first of all, the Prime Minister has never said that. And I don't think anyone... No. I don't think anyone in this House wants to ignore any young person. Uh, we want them to go on and get good, sustainable employment, uh, and we want them to live good lives. What we are doing is focusing on these regions that have the highest percentage of these at-risk young people, where we have structures already in place through our regional economic development programme, working alongside local councils, working alongside local iwi and local businesses. If we are successful uh, with these young people, we will then look at expanding out the programme. But because it is such intensive work, 50 million for just on 5,000 young people, this is long-term work. We want to be sure that we've got it right before we expand it out. Point of order, in Lee's Galloway. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table a transcript of a speech made by Bill English to a meeting of Federated Farmers order. and... F no, order. Order. You don't need to seek leave because that transcript will be freely available if members wanted to source it. Order. Point of order. Point of order. Fresh point of order. It's, well, it, well, it is it's speaking to that point of order. That, no, that transcript no is not freely available. It is freely available. <laughs> Question number. <laughs> order. And now I identify another member who knows who he is, and if he continues to interject and behave like that, he'll be leaving very shortly. Question number eight, Calvin Davis. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Māori Development.